Hello. 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 From the stories of early pioneers, we've now arrived at a time of emotional, social and political strife, the years of World War II. This gallery takes you on a journey from the echoes of anti-colonial struggle among the diaspora, the impact of nationalist and sub-ethnic movements, and the experiences of Indians during the World War II period. These were tough times, but stories of strength and resilience abound. Join us as we walk this gallery with you. Remember to look out for QR codes placed in the gallery to follow the tour in the next gallery as well. Anti-colonial sentiments were prevalent among Indians in the Strait Settlements before World War I. These feelings intensified when Indian nationalist leaders travelled far and wide to garner support from Indian communities for the Indian independence movement back home. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru visited Singapore in 1937, 1946 and 1950 and was hosted by community leaders such as Rajabali Jumaboy. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose was based in Singapore for long periods during World War II to rally support for India's freedom. Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore visited Singapore and parts of Southeast Asia in 1927 to spread his political ideals of Asian universalism. The influence of Tamil leaders of the self-respect movement, such as E.V. Ramasamy Naika, further led to the establishment of many schools and reformist organisations, like the Tamil Reforms Association, which supported anti-caste sentiments, women's rights and reformist marriages. The growing fervour of print and broadcast media further aroused the sense of identity and united the migrant Indian community. In the first half of the 20th century, communities from the Indian subcontinent maintained strong political, sentimental and economic ties with their home country. During this period, anti-colonialism was predominant in the region. Ideas of the Gada movement united Sikh, Patan, Rajput and Punjabi soldiers in the Indian Army. Posted at Alexandra Barracks, Singapore, these soldiers rose in revolt during the Singapore Mutiny of February 1915. Radio and newspaper reports stoked the nationalist spirit of Indians in Singapore and Malaya. Inspired by the ideals of these leaders, local Indians set up and funded several educational institutions and associations. Several regional chapters of the Muslim League were also established in Singapore and Malaya. Such political stirrings within the migrant community culminated in its members supporting the cause of Malayan independence. During the World War II period, the Indians experienced being refugees or perished working on the death railway. Yet others joined the cause of Indian independence, not fearing for their lives or family. These stories of bravery and sheer strength are inspiring. So I've chosen two artefacts which have survived the war years to share these tales with you. But first, let me tell you more about the Indian National Army or INA. The INA was the brainchild of a Japanese intelligence officer, Major Iwaichi Fujiwara. It existed even before the arrival of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose in Southeast Asia. Major Fujiwara advised Mohan Singh, a Sikh officer, to organize the first incarnation of the INA, which comprised mainly Indian prisoners of war. But it was the arrival of Bose in Singapore in 1943 that men, women and children volunteered themselves and contributed resources to the cause of India's freedom. Bose assumed leadership of the Indian Independence League or IIL and the INA on 4th July 1943 at a public ceremony held at the Cathay Building at Dobie Ghat. On 21st October 1943, Subhash Chandra Bose proclaimed the formation of the Provisional Government of Free India to a packed audience at Cathay Cinema Hall. This copy of the proclamation of the Azad Hind document was donated to the IHC by the sixth President of Singapore, Mr. S. R. Nathan. Mr. Nathan, when still a young boy, had witnessed Bose addressing crowds in Singapore. Together with other wartime publications, this collection of rare and important artefacts tells us about the unique experiences of Indians in Singapore in those years. 
Both encouraged women to join the army and established a women's regiment known as Rani of Chansi, which joined him in the fight against the British in Burma, today's Myanmar. Rasama Naomi Navaratnam, also known as Datuk Rasama Bupalan, was born in a conventional Ceylon Tamil Christian family in Malaya. She joined the INA at the young age of 16. News of the Jalawala Bagh tragedy and other injustices meted out to Indian nationalists had inspired her to take part in the fight against the British. Further inspired by Bose's public address in Ipoh, Malaya, she and her sister Ponama joined the Rani of Chansi Regiment. She came to Singapore and travelled to the Kamayut camp in Burma with the regiment. These epaulets are remnants of Rasama's INA uniform. They're rare, as not many INA memorabilia survived the war. With the return of the British, many INA veterans destroyed evidence of their participation in the movement, fearing retribution. Bose was able to reorganize the fledgling Azad Hind Fauj, or Indian National Army, and garner massive support from the expatriate Indian population in Burma, Thailand, Malaya and Singapore. Civilians lent their allegiance by enlisting in the INA or by contributing financially. Tagore's Janagana Mana was adopted as the Azad Hind movement's anthem, while Tipu Sultan's Springing Tiger and Gandhi's Charka, the spinning wheel, were adopted as emblems for the tricolour flag. Itmat, faith, Ittafak, unity, and Kurbani, sacrifice, became the motto of the INA. This motto is also inscribed on the INA monument at Esplanade Drive. In April 1944, Bose's plan to attack the British from the northeast of India via Burma failed. The INA was disbanded following the announcement of the Japanese surrender in August 1945. From this period of anti-colonialism, let's now explore stories of nationalism and sub-ethnic nationalism that captured the hearts and minds of the diaspora. The bronze busts in this gallery represent key Indian leaders whose philosophy and charisma left a deep impression on the diaspora in Singapore and the region. These bronze busts were gifts from the Government of India to the Indian Heritage Centre marking 50 years of Singapore-India diplomatic relations in 2015. These bronze busts are the work of master sculptor Ram Sutta. Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore was a poet, visual artist, playwright, novelist, educator, social reformer and composer. He was Asia's first Nobel laureate, winning the 1913 Nobel Prize in Literature. He travelled vastly from 1878 to 1932, visiting more than 30 countries in five different continents. These trips familiarised the world to his works, political ideas and to India's spiritual and cultural vastness. In 1927, he took a four-month tour of Southeast Asia, visiting Bali, Java, Kuala Lumpur, Malacca, Penang, Siam and Singapore. His travel logs from the tour were collected in a work titled Jatri or Voyager. Mahatma Gandhi never visited Singapore. The response to his Satyagraha movement from the local Indian community was overwhelming and images of Gandhi were displayed in homes, shops and offices. While his activities, writings and speeches were disseminated via print and broadcast media. Mahatma Gandhi's nationalism inspired the local Indian community. In spite of the distance, the experiences of Gandhi and his philosophy was real. His speeches filtered through to the local community via print and broadcast media. In fact, for Indians across the world, Gandhi was a symbol of national pride and peaceful resistance against the colonial oppression. Following Gandhi's assassination in January 1948, memorials were constructed in different parts of the world. The Mahatma Gandhi Memorial Hall at Racecourse Lane in Singapore was built in 1950, with funds raised entirely by the local Indian community. Prominent among the contributors were Rajabali Jomoboy, P. Govindasamy Pillai, and V. Prakrishami Pillai. Prior to this, in March 1948, an urn containing Gandhi's ashes were brought to Malaya by the then Representative 
of the Government of India, Mr. John Divi. The urn was taken to Singapore, where it was kept on the display at Victoria Concert Hall, Kuala Lumpur, Kota Baru, and then to Penang before returning to Singapore, where the ashes were carried in procession to a spot on the seafront, a long cornered drive for the immersion ceremony. Pandit Nehru, one of the most iconic and respected leaders in the subcontinent, visited Singapore three times. Each visit was under different circumstances. The first, on 26 May 1937, was when Nehru was the President of the Indian National Congress and the British Raj still maintained control in India. The second visit, on 18 March 1946, was during a period of transition following World War II. By the time of his third visit on 17 June 1950, he had become the Prime Minister of India, which had then been declared a republic, and Singapore had become a separate British Crown colony. Though far from achieving self-governance, the varying circumstances of each visit coloured his message to Indians here. While these Indian leaders had an immense influence on the diaspora, local leaders emerged too in response to social issues in the mid-20th century. You can join my fellow docent to hear more about the social reform movement and its impact here. Social reform movements in India left a deep impact on Tamils in Singapore and Malaya. Visits by Indian stalwarts such as E.V. Ramasamy Nayakar further inspired Tamil community leaders in Singapore to bring about reforms in local society. Notable among them was A.C. Supaya, proprietor of Gandharasam company specializing in traditional medicine and medicinal ointment. He was founder of the Singapore Vivekananda Club, head of the Sirutiratam Club and a founding member of the Tamils Reform Association. Another was O. Ramasamy Nadar, who donated his two-storey shop house at 125 Sarangoon Road to the Tamils Reform Association. He was also the chairman of the Building Fund Committee, which helped secure a permanent home for the Indian Association in the 1930s. Most well-known among Tamil community leaders was G. Sarangapani or Kosa, as he was popularly known. He came into contact with Periyar's self-respect movement when he became the distribution agent for its magazine Kudi Arasir, meaning Republic in Tamil, in Singapore and Malaya. Kosa is also credited for having helped to arrange Periyar's visit to Singapore and Malaya in 1929 and 1954. Kosa also established Munnetram, meaning Progress in Tamil, a Tamil magazine in 1929. As editor of Tamil's Reform Association's media wing, Tamil Murasi, he actively promoted the importance of literacy, modernization and even reformist marriages. In the 1950s, G. Sarangapani and his associates conceived the idea of celebrating Tamilar Tirunal, Tamil's festival with the aim of uniting all Tamils in Malaya, irrespective of caste and religion. It was first celebrated in Singapore in January 1952. During the festival, speakers, poets and linguists advocating self-respect and reformist ideas were invited by Kosa to speak about Periyar's ideology. The celebrations included a myriad of events such as literature and art competitions for children, sports, races and cultural shows. A champion of the Tamil language, he is much revered for having played a crucial role in establishing Tamil as one of Singapore's four official languages. Sarangapani is also remembered for encouraging the local Tamils to embrace Singapore as their home and thus laid the foundation for a new generation of Singaporean Indians. This silver kuja or water vessel is inscribed with the name G. Sarangapani. It comes from the personal collection of the late leader. It was donated along with a collection of photographs, ephemera and personal effects to the Indian Heritage Centre by his daughter, Miss Rajam Sarangapani 
and is among some of the treasured artifacts in the center's collection of Singapore's Indian heritage. From journeying through the years of war and reform, we would now like to introduce you to the seminal role played by Indians to the founding of modern Singapore in diverse walks of life.